Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. As always, we have the Venerable Rod Steele with us today, who's going to be sharing with us all things Iraq and encompassing that country and where he sees things, things standing at present date. Uh, before we get started, if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe and share. You can find us on Rumble, BitChute under my name. You can find us on Telegram under uh, my name and Club Patriot. And of course, on YouTube, Chris, we're a world and my name as well. And you can see all the latest updates that we have there as well to include this podcast we're about to do. Mr. Steele, thank you for joining the podcast as always. Happy to have you back. Thank you, John. It's always a pleasure. Enjoy uh, meeting with you every month. Likewise. Okay, so today what I was telling you offline is I want to ch change things up a little bit in our structure and ask you some questions based on the things that we've seen before we kind of go into your, your updates that you have. Um, the first thing I wanted to say was it's interesting because I remember, Rod, when I learned about you about three years ago, uh, you had been saying pretty consistently that a lot of the servers for J.P. Morgan and other banks were in Texas. And it's interesting that you see Sudani last week came to the U.S., and when he was done with D.C., he went to Michigan and then he passed through into Texas, just like you were saying. So kudos on that. So I guess I would start with that. Since you're in the Texas area, well, you're in Texas, but you're in that general area. What have you heard on your end as far as his visit, what that entailed and how successful was it? Yeah, well, that's part of what I was going to touch on later. But uh, since we're on the topic, he uh complete had a contingent of 130 people over here from Iraq, largest in history, never been done before, uh, a conglomerate of agreements between corporations and our government in D.C. Never before has so many agreements been made in one week uh, with anybody. And uh, then, of course, he did go to Michigan, another state, and, and uh, Houston specifically uh, in Texas, because that's where they have uh, Iraqi banks. And, and a, a large concentration of Iraqi uh, citizens or, or, Iraqi, or Iraqi people in America. And so those banks service their citizens. Um, actually, I, I know of cases where people, Iraqi people, not you or me, uh, are exchanging with those Iraqi banks now. Um, and that's been going on since he was here. Um, and then they did migrate down to Houston and, and the server for the uh, uh, RV release uh, was placed in Houston by Bush Sr. Uh, when he was in office, because that's where his home was at the time. And he wanted to be able to keep a close eye on things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's very it was a comforting to hear it play out in the public, uh, like I had been telling people, like you said, for several years. <laughs> Exactly, exactly right. So the other interesting thing I was thinking about, Rod, in this whole equation is that um, a friend of mine and our, one of our team members, Joe, lives in the, uh, the Houston area, about 45 minutes from the Woodlands Mall, where a lot of those pictures uh, were kind of being surfacing virally about uh, the, the new exchange centers or some of the existing exchange centers that have popped up and now newly have on the board uh, Iraq Dinar, among other things. And uh, while it's not ready to go yet, it is an interesting foretelling uh, that that's happening. And so he went down and visited with, I guess, the owner of all of those in that location and, you know, Kingwood and the greater Houston area. And uh, he said, obviously, not, it hasn't happened yet, to your point, but that they're aware of things transitioning. So I was wondering if you had any information on that from your side, since you're in Texas, about exchange centers, anything you've heard about that, and, and what sort of the consensus is around it. Yeah, I, I wish I had direct eyes on uh, concentrate. A lot of people in smaller states don't realize how large Texas is. So it, it actually takes more distance from L.A. to El Paso. Let me get that. Let me reverse that. OK, it is a greater distance from El Paso to Houston than it is from L.A. to El Paso. Mm. <laughs> so you cover like four states and, and we're further. It's longer distance than those four states to get from one city yeah. to another. <laughs> You know? So, no, I haven't been down there personally. We are working on bullet trains to get uh, from DFW to Houston. If they mm -hmm. ever get the politics out of the way, you got ranchers that say it's going to disturb the cattle and, and they won't be able to function properly and all kinds of stuff. But we'll eventually get there. But to get back to your point, um, yeah, I have I have seen those. Some of those were a little bit of a misnomer. They were uh, they were uh, kiosks that already existed that people mm -hmm kind of jumped the gun on, but 
the fact is that they were bringing in the currency, even to the currently existing ones, as well as the new ones, was a big plus, I think, um, that they're preparing to do that. It's, it's being geared up. Everything is being geared up. Um, and so it's all happening simultaneously. There's so much going on at once. I don't think you could even cover it in one report. No, you couldn't. That's, you know, you kind of need these micro reports to sort of cover it like an elephant one piece at a time. Um, so with that in mind, Rod, uh, the other next question I would kind of pivot to is having your help in sort of dispelling some of the, the misinformation that's out there around the dinar with respect to the fact of uh, exchange time. Historically, as you know, in the past, it's typically been 90 days. Some people are concerned for whatever reason that that's not enough time. I, I think it's a sufficient amount of time and, and historically what it's been. What have you heard on your end in terms of when it does go, how much time will people have to actually do the exchange process? Oh, okay. Well, uh, I, I, was, I was misinterpreting your questions. You actually get it. <laughs> um, now, there's no rush on that and no reason for people to be overly concerned. Now, if they do a consult with me, they will learn about options available that are time sensitive, and those need to be acted on fairly quickly. However, the general uh, state of the rate, I guess we could call it, um, is, is going to be consistent. And if people are satisfied with that, uh, more power to you. I, I've waited 25 years. I'm going for every dime they owe me as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, <laughs> the point being, they actually should have, uh, and here in the United States, uh, I know they're going to allow a year uh, for turning in the fiat dollars and, and exchanging those for the U.S. Treasury notes, which will be available um, at, the re, um, at the exchange that you're referring to. Um, as far as, as how long they have to do that, I would think that uh, 90 days is actually on the conservative side, but as, as long as it's within that 4X rate. Um, again, I say, if, if you want to take advantage of a consultation with me and get a whole lot more, then yes, you would have more time sensitive situations there. But as far as the regular rate, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Okay, fair enough. Thank you for that. And then another, another concern out there that we're trying to help with our audience alleviate and hopefully with your assistance uh, facilitate that, which would be there's a lot of misinformation going around about the $25,000 note that it's going to uh, just be worth $25, which, as you know, would be a re-denomination. And just common sense and critical thinking would tell you that they, Iraq would not go through the trouble of coming to America, meeting with Erdogan, you know, working with the WTO, working with the BRICS that they're getting in position to do. Uh, all the work that it takes to come back internationally just to do a simple redenomination, they could do that without any of that effort. So would love your sort of articulation on that situation. Yeah, exactly. And incidentally, Melanie Hines mentioned you as well as a couple of others that are all in that, we're all in the same camp. Uh, there, there are some who aren't, and I don't understand why, other than that perhaps for the lack of uh, proper in information and education. But uh, no, this the, what people confuse is the rate that will be going on with the people inside Iraq as a country themselves versus what is going on internationally with the rate uh, for the rest of us. And so one virtually has nothing to do with the other. Uh, you get the two confused when you read a lot of different information and articles, and you have to realize a lot of those articles coming out of Iraq are not written to you and me. They're written to the Iraqi people. And so what they perceive is what is going to be the situation for them in their country, which has no bearing on what we receive at our exchange for you and me internationally. Um, they, they, those notes that you have will be fully worth exactly what they say they are from the perspective of the rate that you're going to get. They're not going to lop anything. Uh, you're not going to be disappointed. And everything's going to be just hunky dory. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for clarifying and confirming that for those who may have had some uh, confusion about that or, or just needed uh, some clarification. So thank you. That actually brings up another interesting question, Rod. Do you, and if you don't, that's fine, but are you aware of when the Iraqi citizens get their exchange? Obviously, what they're getting is different than what we're getting globally, right? Because it's because they're still getting oil credits and things like that that we wouldn't get because they live in an oil rich area. Exactly. Um, but um, do you know what kind of lag time there might be that you can ascertain between when the Iraqi citizens go and then it goes globally? 
Yeah, that well, that's the multi-million dollar question right now. And it's it's confusing even for me, and I'm well plugged in. Um I do know legally, and and it was accepted by the US Treasury and the government here, they requested in Iraq a 72 hour celebration time from the time they go before it goes on Forex. And we agreed to that. Um with that said, and I was going to bring this up later, I'm a little <laughs> concerned about how close we are, at least in this country, for sure, uh, to be ready to distribute to those of us who are just exchanging, because we are on a tier level. Uh, one and two are in good shape, but we're right in the smack in the middle of tier three, getting them funded. We do have um, bond people who have received, but by no means all. And uh, the ones who have are being clamped down on uh, heavily and some of them penalized uh, for anything they have said. Um, so it makes that communication more and more difficult. Um, the, you've got people in farm claims here in the United States that won their claims in, the in court and they have never been compensated. Uh, you've got the American uh, Native Native American who had a huge uh, payout agreement that has never been paid to them. Uh, some of that has begun, but it's not finished. Um, and then you've got people like the CMKX stock fund fraud scheme that took place that they all got scammed on, and they're going to be uh, corrected. Uh, they have not received theirs yet. There are thousands of people in the uh, what are now labeled as prosperity programs, which are really about 12 high yield trade programs back in the 90s that have yet to ever been paid out. Um, the idea on the most of these was when you reach 30 percent um, uh, distribution that they would go ahead with the next one. I know that's true with the bond people. I know it's true with the prosperity people, for instance. Oh, my goodness. Uh, let me I will have that go to voice. Uh, <laughs> That's one of my doctors calling. I, I still get quite a few of those. Uh, we're still in the recovery process and I'm still trying to get to a point where I can be me. I'm good on shows, but uh, you know, once the camera's off, I'm, I'm, I kind of collapse. Uh, right. anyway, um, so we're trying to, we're trying to address that issue. Anyway, um, where my point was, we don't know here in the States exactly where we stand on completion with tier three. We know it's not done. And there are some conservatives uh, who are saying that we, we, we this may not be completed uh, not only in April, but but not in May either. And it run into early June before it's completed. Others say, no, they think it'll be pushed through much faster. I do know that uh, they have toyed with the idea instead of trying to distribute to the uh, prosperity people uh, originally, it was designed to have a package sent to the prosperity people and a package held at the bank. And when you brought the two together, they would be melded and it would be one complete program. Um, I've heard that they're talking about just waiting and doing it all at the exchange with, with us when we do the currencies. So maybe that'll help speed things up. Um, you've still got bond people that haven't been paid. And a lot of that money is involved in this use Toward the currencies. So it, it all plays together. I wish I had a crystal ball, but I don't. If I did, I'd probably be a lot better off. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. So I appreciate the uh, feedback on that. Um, I'm wondering, and just, just more of a, a, a curiosity question, but you know, we know how corrupt Iraq has been. We know what they're dealing with with the Iranian proxies and their government, like our illegally installed in government that we're going to be expunging here shortly in America. And then you're dealing with, of course, the U.S. militias, right? But Sudani has got a lot accomplished on that trip in the U.S. And even with Erdogan this past week, as you know, Erdogan was there earlier uh, in Iraq. And I think they got about, uh, we reported about 26 important agreements signed. Um, but they've still yet to rectify the situation with the U.S. militias, right, removing them out of Iraq. There's still no timetable for that. And then there's the issue of getting rid of the corrupt Iranian proxies in the government. I guess my two-part question, Rod, would be, other than corruption, uh, what do you think it'll take to remove the Iranian proxies as well as our U.S. government, our military specifically? 
And what, what is the real holdup as to why Iraq hasn't yet joined the WTO? Yeah, well, those are terrific, point, poignant questions. Uh, that deserve poignant answers, and I'm not <laughs> sure that we're being given enough information to give a poignant response. Um, we, we, I think there's still some debate as to how, how much in depth, if any, we're going to continue carrying the sanctions against Iran. Uh, you're basically punishing the country for what their militia are doing, uh, which is basically a rebel group. And of course, they try to separate themselves and say, we're not involved, we're not responsible. And our attitude toward that is, well, they're in your country, so that makes you responsible. And if you can't handle the problem, we most definitely can. And so uh, the, the threats are in place. Uh, we all know it's not gonna go to any kind of World War III level because everybody involved wants this to happen, except for the rebels within Iran. And um, with with that said, they were trying to push forward as quickly as possible. <laughs> and then as far as our presence, um, that's almost a, um, where you, what's that thing where you move the cups around and try to figure out where the thing is underneath it? That That's kind of how it is almost political mm -hmm. with our military over there. Uh, yes, there are, I do know for a fact, there are people packing up in military and leaving from with the U.S. Uh, military that are, are, are being dispersed. However, at the same time, there is a core group of about oh, 2,500, 3,000 or so that will probably always be present in Iraq. We've got the world's largest military runway that we built there. We've got the world's largest embassy that we built there. And we're not about to leave. Our interests are too invested uh, to make sure that they're not protected. And if we were to leave, Iran would move in and this thing would all fall apart and go to heck in a handbasket. And everybody knows that. Iraq knows that. They're behind closed doors. They're begging us to stay. Kurdistan is begging us to stay. So we are not leaving. Uh, the military contingent of, of the warring factor, yes, they are being moved out. But as far as a, a training and support group um, and basic additional defense, uh, we will never leave yeah, Iraq, at least. Yeah, no, we, we need a certain amount of troops for redundancy, even if it's just to help train their their military, but we don't need it to the scale that we once did, which was, I believe, being used to be corruptible to keep them down and keep them, you know, on, on a program rate that they've been on for, you know, at least the last 14 years, right? So um, I, if it helps you, Rod, I, I can give you what we espouse it to be, the issues. And the first point would be corruption just plain and simple. Oh, yeah. They could join the WTO at any time they want. They're just dragging their feet because of corruption, point blank and simple. It's nothing more complicated than that. In terms of what, I, what we believe will be the tipping point that will break away the U.S. militias enough and the corrupt Iranian proxies is the Israel doing what they've started to do. As you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, Iran made a cursory drone attack and Israel retaliated likewise with some drone attacks. We believe that was a test from Israel to see what fault points and vulnerabilities the Iranian infrastructure has militarily uh, and with air, with air support so that the next time they hit, they're going to hit the secret nuclear power plants of Iran, which will in turn free up a lot of Palestine, the Middle East, and break away Iran and the militias, which will free up the dinar as per the uh, Kim Clement prophecy. And as a Christian, I say that because I know you're familiar with who he, who he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they're scheduled for May the 9th. Uh, I was hearing rumor that it was happening behind closed doors right now, but I don't have any confirmation of that from anybody that counts. I'm sorry, I, I might have missed something. What was scheduled for May 9th? The WTO acceptance. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, you know, at some point it's going to happen. I just wonder if it's, if it's necessary, if it's, a, I wonder if it's mutually exclusive from them being able to move forward with the reset. I don't think so. Uh, I know it was one of the key elements that they said needed to be done on a checklist, but I, as far especially inside Iraq, I don't think it's going to be that uh, serious. Now, it would it have an effect before it goes international? They may be waiting on that. Uh, I can't be certain. Mm, no, that's fine. Uh, it's just it's just an interesting thing to kind of look at as we look at sort of the thirty thousand foot view of all the different touch points that's going on with this since, you know, Iraq is your specialty and 
kind of what you focus most of your energies on. So that's why I figured, you know, you would be uh, certainly aware of a lot of it. Um, at this point, I'll just turn it over to you for any uh, information that you'd like to share that you have up to the latest point. Okay, well, we've covered a lot of it. Um, but I, I, like I said, I only come on once a month. And so it's kind of nice to do a review uh, if people haven't, uh, you know, been up to date since that point. Um, you know, when everybody was over here rocking and rolling in Washington, uh, there were many chief executives, officers, and many banks around the world at the U.S. Treasury uh, meeting. Uh, they was with Sidani a lot, or Barzani. Uh, you had CEOs from Citibank, Chase Bank, and Bank of America all present. Um, we were also had uh, J.P. Morgan representatives, Merrill Lynch, all the investment companies you could imagine. Uh, all of them were at these meetings. The meetings were uh, were going on. And their Iraqi entourage was there in completion, as we talked about, 130 of them present. Um, Sadani made an announcement to the citizens. Now, I've gotten mixed info on this. Um, my people were saying the big screens were going in and that these were preparing to make a big announcement when they got back. If you listen to Nader, he says they're not there. I don't know if they weren't where he was or if they're just not there at all. Uh, but that's I've, I've put a lot of faith in the people I talk to, and I'm, so I'm getting two different messages on that one. Um, but the Treasury uh, released any sanctions on the 28 banks that were there in Iraq because they are all over the Iraq, ready to be used by the Iraqi citizens to exchange their notes for the lower notes. Uh, the Iraqi citizens will not have the ability to smuggle IPDs to any country, especially Iran. Um, now, um, an, another person I'm close to here in, in the Texas area, um, we both have a very similar uh, financial service background of about 40 years each. And um, uh, one of the comments with him was that uh, after spending 40 years in the investment banking and financial planning industry, which allows for a slight advantage in research in certain areas of acknowledged resources regarding money and securities, those areas being the IMF, Forex, the WTO, et cetera, the prime minister returned to his country on this past Monday, returning over to the head of the CBI to announce the pending revaluation of his nation's currency. The CBI provided the new rate to the IMF, who in turn provided the rate to the Forex, which by policy has 72 hours from receipt to post for universal recognition, which will be sometime, they think, between, um, well, this week, actually, of course, it, it hasn't happened yet, since both the Gazette and the IMF rate schedules are published on Wednesday each week, and we can assume there should be a revaluation, we should receive that news during that window. Well, Part of that's true. It is Wednesday, but it's also Sunday. And the fact that they can do it on any other day of the week they want to run a special edition on. So it really is kind of irrelevant. Uh, we used to think that, that it was going to be on a Wednesday or Sunday, but they said, no, we can we can run a special edition anytime we want to. So you can't put a lot of trust or faith in, in that particular statement. Um, let's see here. I've got every detail of the meetings and locations while they were here was known. It's all about, it was all about the economy and agreements being activated um, last week. Uh, the agreements with the companies going forward in Iraq and securing positions in prestigious universities for Iraqi citizens uh, to attend and then return to Iraq with new training. And so we're going out of our way to make sure that they can be successful. Uh, there's never been this large a delegation over here or so many partnership agreements being made. Uh, this was to have begun back in 2008, and Iran, among others, kept stopping it. Uh, now, in 2024, we are finally getting there. We talked about Michigan and Houston and the uh, top. I'm not even going to go over that again. We've already talked about it. Um, while they're trying to decide about sanctions, and they now, of course, know that we're not leaving. So um, our U.S. banks are ready with staff in place as of this week, um, April 30th. Uh, but according to Gregorian calendar, April 17th is uh, supposed to be biblical um, when all the delegates in Iraq were over here as a sovereign nation. Uh, all final signatures are done. Um, be looking for the new gold backed U.S. notes by um, what day are we on? Friday. <laughs> they, were, they were thinking today, actually, is when they thought mm -hmm. we might see the U.S. notes coming out. Um, so I, I guess we're still looking for that. 
we know they're in the banks. I've had numerous confirmations from bankers that there's pallets of shrimp U.S. notes on on the, the pallets inside their inside their uh, bank vaults. So we're just waiting on a release for that. Um, we're hoping for announcements imminently. Uh, the bondholders were are ready to move forward. Um, military is prepared in 360 cities in the United States after the U.S. Supreme Court makes its announcement. Have we had that yet? Because I haven't heard it. Um, no. uh, a lot of civil unrest is expected to take place. Uh, no one with a felony history will be accepted on the exchange. Um, and then uh, rates are going up in, in the bank screens here in the U.S. Um, but the deep state is done abusing us at every level. Uh, there are big contracts in Brazil being completed, some in Iraq, of course, we know about those. Um, and I don't have confirmation of this. You know, Ben, ben Fulford was saying that Ukraine had surrendered. Have you got anything on that? Because I don't I don't have it confirmed. Ru Russia's already beaten them. This is just this yeah. is just playing out, you know, in front of scenes for people to see. It's already been, you know, done, but it hasn't officially been announced, but it's just a matter of time. Right. Okay. Well, we were actually expecting to have this uh, RV on uh, Sunday and then midnight after Sunday, which would have been midnight Monday, I guess. Um, and they still didn't have it. And they had people in place in the banks waiting for it. Um, and as I said earlier, Iraq should be voted on May 9th in the WTO. Uh, there was a missile attack this past week on a base, and the U.S. says we didn't do it, and yet they found the missile floating in the ocean from the U.S., uh, so that was somewhat of a distraction. Uh, mm -hmm. Iraq uh, working out oil deals with Turkey. They're just waiting for their announcement anytime after those uh, agreements are made. Um, the latest I had, and I was supposed to have had more today, but with technical issues, we couldn't get together with forces. Uh, not happening um, as of yet. Uh, maybe tomorrow or later this week. They're they're mad about it. Uh, Sudani will make two major announcements after the president of Turkey goes back home, and the citizens of Iraq will be told after he leaves. Uh, the budget is done. A new rate exists and should go into effect. Um, they thought this week, but uh, obviously it hasn't happened yet. So. That's what I was trying to get in touch with him for, was to see what the delay was. And unfortunately, I just wasn't able to reach them. Right. Well, thanks for the report, Rod. Thanks for the update. Um, yeah, we're still, uh, you know, and we know 26 agreements did happen between uh, Erdogan and Sudani as of this week, but he still needs to get in a parliament and officially announce it and announce the oil and gas law and make it real. They still haven't put up a speaker of the house, which is ridiculous because they could have done that at any time. And, that's just another stall tactic with the Iranian proxies. So there's still some things we believe have to be worked out, but we're definitely uh, making progress. Uh, should have been a lot sooner. We all know that, but um, we're we're removing corruption globally, and that that is, it, for lack of a better word, a process that has to work through its cycle, so to speak. So I'm glad you brought those things up. The uh, last two questions I had for you today, Rod, because I want to respect your time, is firstly a uh, lot of uh, contention or debate about which banks to go and do these exchanges in. We know JP Morgan, Wells Fargo will be the primary ones, but are there any ones that you know additionally that will be going or ones that you would recommend people to avoid? Uh, well, the, okay. I'll straighten that. Okay. <laughs> the top five tier one banks are all very similar. Um, mm -hmm. that I'm hearing two stories on JP Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo being that Wells, um, had it for so long until they got a little underhanded and started creating a bunch of fake accounts and the auditors caught it and, and the penalty was to take away the lead contract from Wells Fargo and give it to Chase. Um, Diamond, you know, took that opportunity and ran with it. I don't like the guy. I think he's a cheat, but he's done well with this new contract. I mean, he's putting up 10 um, Chase banks within Iraq and, and a 30 plus story uh, high rise in Baghdad, all as a result after getting this contract. Uh, so they probably got the most flexibility uh, of anybody 
However, uh, Wells is the only one I know who has openly stated that they will take anybody. Um, some of these banks don't want us or they don't want us for more than a year or two because they fully expect all these toothless crackheads to go below their money. And uh, I hope through programs like yours and information like mine and those of us in the community have done our best knocking ourselves out, trying to educate all of them in the community that hopefully we have substantially increased the percentage of people that will manage that wisely. Um, nonetheless, I'm sure you will have some that will end up doing exactly what the banks think they will do. Um, and that's obvious. That's also another reason why this will never happen again, folks, as far as the general community is concerned. Uh, we lucked out getting to participate in this. Uh, we didn't the first time when um, it, back in 91, that was limited to the military and political figures primarily. This time, because of the internet, the, inter the information got out and the public found out about it as well. They weren't going to allow that again. When we do the next um, reval, which probably been about six months after this one goes through with the 27 that are in the first basket, uh, I understand about a half a dozen will be in the second basket, should be six months from now. The ruling on that is you've got to be a sophisticated um, Bank, uh, sophisticated bank customer, which in translation means you've got to have at least $10 million, $10 million in net worth in order to participate in purchasing those foreign currencies from them. So they're trying to not allow this to happen again for the general public. As far as the top five, you've got Chase, Wells, uh, Citibank, Bank of America. I think I, I would choose HSBC as, as would be my best one since they are a large, they're 30% owner in Wells Fargo and is highly owned by the Chinese elders uh, and is trying to control things. And um, they're an, an excellent choice as well. And then you've got your regional banks, uh, which don't have as sizable a agreement with the U.S. Treasury that the tier one banks have. They will be exchanging. You know, I have people tell me, oh, my regional banker, heard about that I've got Dinar and, and he's got me on a list and I'm going to go in and see him. That's fine. If you're willing to take what he offers you, um, great, you know, and y'all can have that relationship. But if, if you're a little more astute and, and want the most that's available, um, you're going to have to go through a tier one, one of those top five banks to do it. And you're going to have to know what to say and how to approach it. And that's why I offer the, um, the consultations that I offer over on my X account at uh, Patriot Rod Steele, no E on the end, and just DM me that you're interested in knowing about how to handle yourself better uh, at the uh, appointment and how to make the most out of it for yourself and your family and generationally from there to come. I cover it all, and we do it in between 30 and 40 minutes. It's it's a tremendous amount of information, and most people are extremely grateful for it. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Um, last point is that uh, there's another piece of misinformation that people need to be corrected on. I'm sure you'll help with that. Is some people are of the mindset that they can just buy currencies, do it black market and do it legitimately. And when the banks do go and you know run your currency through the Delaware machine to test their authenticity for their own diligence, that if they find one or two bad notes, nothing will happen to you and you'll be just fine. And that does not ring true with what our team has found at all. Uh, that there are going to be some substantial issues with that. So I wonder if you could just add some additional uh, information or shed some light on that as well. Well, I, I guess we'll find out when we get there because um, I've I've actually been witness to a couple that were uh, counterfeit that they, they let go through. The, the concept originally was that they were only after the bad guys trying to sneak in a stack you know, it, it, the, the, the purpose of this, folks, is a redistribution of wealth from the wicked to the righteous to get money out into the economy and do the humanitarian effort and benefit with it. And if you're the good person trying to do the good thing, if you're the one that got snubbed, I don't really understand why they're going to penalize you for that if you did it in good intention. Um, we are the impetus of what is going to become a worldwide um, universal basic income program that is going to be slowly structured into place. And we're kind of like the test group to put through there to see what's going to happen when we start redistributing these funds. 
And so uh, I did not experience that, John. I, I'm, I'm, if, if that turns out to be the case, then I guess I'll be proven wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I just wanted your take on it because we actually have somebody we know in Georgia that was working with the Wells Fargo Bank and they did have a counterfeit note and the manager let it through and Treasury came in and did an audit of that, that particular branch and that brand, that manager was fired wow. right on the spot. Yeah, so I don't think they're playing around with it because they just don't want to take, we just don't recommend, in our camp, we don't res recommend people take the risk, we recommend they go to a, a licensed dealer with who can you know certify the currency is real? You get you know get a receipt. And you know the origin of it and that it's legit. Just why take those chances? Why put yourself in that position? You worked so hard, you, you you did your diligence, you prepared. Take those extra steps to do it right, and just don't even subjugate yourself to that risk. That's kind of our philosophy. Okay, yeah, and and you'll pay a little more of a premium to do that. But like to say, you have you have the satisfaction and comfort of knowing that you've got everything legitimate. Well, as the old saying goes, you get what you pay for, right? So, <laughs> so, so, Rod, as we come to the end of the show, as always, you know how it goes. We'll ask people final thoughts you have and where people can find out more about you. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to jump the gun on that. But yes, um, absolutely. Come come visit me over on X. I've had a lot of people say they've never been on X until they decided to try to track me down. Uh, it is under Patriot Rod Steel, S-T-E-E-L. Uh, be aware of other copycats that use my photo, my header, my information exactly duplicated. The only difference is the address. So the Patriot Rod Steele is spelled correctly. S-T-E-E-L is the only correct one. Um, they're copying everything. It's on Rumble. It's on Telegram. It's in PayPal. It's in a cash app. You name it, it's been duplicated. And so you've got to be sure you're dealing with the real McCoy. And that's the one that you're looking for. We'll go over, just let me know you would like to have a consult and I'll go over all the details of what that will cover and you can make that decision at that point. And I, I look forward to, uh, to serving you. Thank you for that, Rod. And again, folks, um, as we iterated just a minute ago, if you are getting foreign currencies, you have them or you're gonna be looking to purchase more, please make sure that you do your diligence and work with a very professional dealer where you know what you're getting for. As Brad said, there is a bit of a premium, but you do get what you pay for in terms of peace of mind and authenticity. And if you are looking for bonds or currencies in any of these realms, we'll leave that link at the description for you. Rod, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. And we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye.